Welcome to the Recycle Podcast, where we discuss everyday issues from a mental health perspective. We are your hosts, Dr. Rashonda Strickland, Dr. LaFanya Jones Hines, and Dr. Nichelle Wall. Now, don't get it twisted. We're not going to be your stereotypical therapist. What we will be is informative, down to earth, a little spicy, and vulnerable. All right, interns, turn up your volume, grab your pen and paper. It's supervision time. As a reminder, this podcast is not meant to take the place of a relationship with a licensed mental health professional. Welcome back to session 69, Nightmare Before Me. <laughs> if you all have been listening to the sessions for this month, you would know that this title is befitting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very. <laughs> Absolutely. And in turns, this is a bittersweet moment because this will be our last time recording in this room as we are relocating our podcast room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It but y'all sad. will see it in December. Oh, yes. For this broad. Yes. So exciting. <laughs> I know. Okay. So as you all have heard for the entire month, we've been talking about narcissistic traits, narcissistic personality disorder. Y'all see, we can't, that's why we can't say narcissistic too many times. We, we have, have to say MPD. <laughs> all of us. Yes, this are not any of our friends. <laughs> So what I wanted to do is give you a recap first of the most recent definition. And then my question is for the interns, ladies, not for you, not for you guys. Oh, she's <laughs> switching it up on us. Yes, yes, yes. So the definition we're using to help you all understand NPD is NPD is a mental condition in which people have an inflated sense of their own importance, a deep need for excessive attention and admiration, troubled relationships, and a lack of empathy for others. But behind this mask of extreme confidence lies a fragile self-esteem that's vulnerable to the slightest criticism. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you remember, we have been talking about um, just narcissism, basically. All (laughs) things. All things. All things. Yes. Mm -hmm. We gave you three um, different types, which there are more there. I think there are like nine. It may be more than nine, but we just gave you three. So if you want more information on it, you'll have to do some research or you can um, make comments in the um, comment section and let us know if you want to know information about the others. So we can do maybe a part two or another month of something. So my question to you interns is, are you in a relationship with someone of any kind? It can be a romantic relationship. It can be a employee, employer. It can be a friendship. Your mama. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> a parental <laughs> relationship. <laughs> so uh, she done threw me off. Are you, <laughs> are you in a relationship with any of those types of people um, that have these types of traits? They have a sense of entitlement or superiority. They lack empathy. Um, they're manipulative or controlling. They have a strong need for admiration. They focus on getting their own needs met and they often ignore yours. They have a higher level of aggression and they have a difficult time taking feedback about their behavior. But we would like for you all to make a comment in the comment section and let us know. Yes. No, maybe. I don't Mm -hmm. know. Possibly. Possibly. (laughs) (laughs) Or have been in the past. Yes. Yes. That's a good one too. Even if you're not current. Yeah. Yeah. To prevent us from beating a dead horse (laughs) and constantly giving y'all traits and definitions of NPD, we're going to break it down kind of and talk about relationships, um, relationships with bosses, relationships with uh, parents and siblings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So where y'all want to start? Let's start with what starts us, parents. All right. Yeah. Let's do it. One of the things that I saw while I was doing my research about, um, you know, being raised by a narcissist. Now, what I did not look at was 
a parent raising a narcissist Mm. because I Mm. think that's a little bit different than being raised by one. Mm -hmm. Um, But more specifically, the thing that I was looking at was um, being raised by a narcissist. And one of the big things that kind of kept popping up was that children are seen as an extension of them. Mm -hmm. So you are a reflection of me. So if you are not performing well, if Mm -hmm. you are not presentable, if you are not, you know, excelling in every Mm -hmm. area possible, Mm -hmm. then that becomes a problem because it doesn't uphold the admiration part of narcissism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, what parents I know parents are gonna be like they're trying to blame us yes we are (laughs) we are this one we this one is a parental thing because when you're raising children and you focus more on oh you're such a good athlete oh your grades are so good and they don't get the you know Uh, attention when they come to you and say well mama can you know can we play cards or can we play a board game or can we read a book or you know whatever you don't give them that that other side of life Mm -hmm. and what what makes us stable as a person yeah it's not well balanced Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. because what you end up doing or the child does and of course this is not necessarily any fault of the child but they reinforce that parent's sense of self. Mm -hmm. So the more you do, the more you look the way that they believe you should in their head, Mm -hmm. the more their self esteem continues to inflate because Mm -hmm. you are become the embodiment of, you know, you're like a living walking version of my accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Essentially. I think one way to look at it is think of uh, a parent who has a kid that plays football Mm -hmm. and they get everything they're the parent out there getting ejected, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they can't come back. Like think of those type of situations and you can kind of see a level of narcissism in that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Children that are raised by, you know, narcissistic parents, either one or both, um, you know, they don't get a chance to really be expressive with their emotions because you cannot fall out of line. So if you, you know, describe any type of disagreement with how they're re- you're being raised, any disagreement with um, their behavior, you're, you know, you are now basically an enemy. It's know? the image. Mm-hmm. You have to keep up a certain image in order for you to fit in, in order for you to feel like you have a place in the family. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if you go against the grain, then you're, you're cast out because you're no longer benefiting me. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I found this list. Um, and of course we'll cite all of this in the show notes, but um, I found this list that talked about, you know, narcissistic mothers in particular. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I think we talk a lot about narcissism and people kind of default to men mm-hmm. when they think about uh, narcissism. Yeah. But uh I found this list about narcissistic mothers. And one of the things that it was talking about was um, making conversations about her, Mm -hmm. you know, um, constantly. And uh, I was doing some testing a while ago and I came across a parent that was um, every time I said something positive about the child, she backdoored it with, you know, because I had said something about the child's hair. She had a head full of beautiful hair. And literally the mom said, well, she got that from me. Hmm. And it threw me off because I was like, (laughs) I was like, what? (laughs) Because no, you didn't. (laughs) But (laughs) but I was like, you you couldn't even for a second let your child be complimented. Um, Because this this child really did have a head full of thick, beautiful, you Mm -hmm. know, hair. Um. And, you know, it kind of ombre down into like a light color on the tips. Mm -hmm. And I commented on that and I was like, really? Like this, I'm literally not even talking to you (laughs) for one. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm talking to your child and you had to interject just because not even five seconds of time was was spent about -hmm. about her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which if you're testing the child, it's not 
about the other person. It's oh, about the child. I could go think. into way more detail, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But uh, it just, when I was doing my research, it made me think about that, mm -hmm. that experience and how I can only imagine um, on a day-to-day -day basis what this individual goes through. Mm -hmm. If in this little microcosm of what the time that they spent with me, you know, one small, tiny compliment was overshadowed with oh well they got that from me mm -hmm. um as an effort to kind of fish for a compliment themselves mm -hmm. uh and just thinking about children that have narcissistic mothers in particular and how you even though your accomplishments are a reflection of them they still want to make sure that they outshine you mm -hmm. so you can you still need to accomplish mm -hmm. but you can't accomplish too much because mm -hmm. then you start to look better than me mm -hmm. can't have that can we right and the kind of dissonance that that puts a child in that I have to be great but I have to balance my greatness because if I do too much then I'll feel the wrath of my parent come in my direction but I still Sad. have to be perfect right that's so that's so confusing and tiresome mm -hmm. like you really do learn how to be different people at school at home if you're old enough to work at work around your friends around your siblings around one parent and the other mm -hmm. like that is very um depressing mm -hmm. absolutely much. And this individual was highly, mm. you know, like I said, I could go into way more detail, but, um, it's just, it's difficult to watch that, mm -hmm. you know, when you see it unfolding in front and you, uh, you know, in this case, there's nothing I can do about this, mm -hmm. you know, because that's not the scope of what I was working with them for, but, um, it is difficult to mm -hmm. see that. It is. It makes you want to say, anybody come to see you, Otis? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, another thing, it, I mean, there's a whole list of things, but the things that kind of stood out to me from that list were they will boast you to other people, mm. but will not validate your accomplishments in private. Because you can't get too, too up there. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I got to make us look good right. in front of other people. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. I cut you off, mm -hmm. Dr. Long. No, you didn't. Oh. <laughs> um, which then kind of feels like fake love. Mm -hmm. You know, I imagine children, um, and I wish we had somebody here that was comfortable um, saying that they were raised by a narcissist, but um, that I imagine that that feels lonely, you know, because you mm -hmm. don't have an, a real genuine sense of like, well, what does being loved feel like? Because I was only loved in public. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the thing about it is, even if you try to tell someone about how this relationship is behind closed doors, people don't believe you mm -hmm. because they see the other side. And so, mm -hmm. which, which makes the child then think it's about, it's them, it's their fault. Mm -hmm. Mommy dearest. Oh God. Ooh. We should, we really have to watch them. I love that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That one. <laughs> if you haven't seen that movie, what rock are you living under first? <laughs> um, <laughs> Because that no wire hangers, honey. Ooh. She. That poor baby. Ooh. Yes. I hope they got some, <laughs> some counseling after that movie. Even the, yeah, the actresses, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, man, that's a deep one. But, you know, the thing about children being raised by narcissists is a lot of, you know, you will have a lot of self-esteem building that you will need to do mm -hmm. once you either go low contact or no contact because for the most part that's for in a general sense what will likely happen with those relationships of course not all but mm -hmm. a lot of individuals will go low contact or no contact with their parent because at some point you just can't take it anymore yeah and it takes a long time for them to get there mm -hmm. because they continue to seek after the love that they never got mm -hmm. thinking that the parent will change and as you've heard on the previous sessions, it's not likely. It, it's a slim mm -hmm. to none change. Mm -hmm. I mean, being somebody who used to work for, you know, child protective services, like not to say just narcissism, but when you're looking at neglect and abuse, those kids still want that love of that parent. And it takes a really long time for them to be like, okay, I'm done. Yep. I, I cannot do this anymore because it's detrimental to me. But it's still that 
that little kid is still inside of them wishing that things were different. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, another, you know, and I know I was just talking about narcissistic mothers, but um, what I found interesting about um, being raised by a narcissistic father, mm-hmm. um, and specifically this one was talking about being raised by a narcissistic father and a son relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, in how there is a level of competition and wanting to please, Mm -hmm. um, the father and how a lot of sons will try to follow in the footsteps of their, their parent. So if he is an attorney or he is a, you know, a doctor Mm -hmm. that they will try to excel in that same field, um, as a way to prove themselves to the parent. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was a lot of what I found that being raised by a narcissistic father, there's a lot of trying to prove your worth to the father by doing what they do Mm -hmm. um, versus with narcissistic mothers. It kind of sounded like it was much more leading to self-esteem issues. Um, But the thing was uh, with the narcissistic father, like even if you tried to like outperform them Mm -hmm. and out accomplish them, they still will not acknowledge your accomplishments. Mm -hmm. Nope. Uh, even if you do better, ultimately, they will still see and find some way to uh, downgrade you to essentially, quote unquote, mm-hmm. put you back in your place. Yeah, it's the the goalpost continues to move. Mm-hmm. So you which is, again, why the self-esteem um, complications happen, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because it's like they'll never reach the end of the competition. Mm-hmm. No. Because it's always going to be something different. If I say I want you to do X, Y, Z, then you do it. Then I'd be like, okay, well, you know, you should have did this instead. And that wasn't even anywhere in the instructions. Right. So it's just you're always going to be confused at what's going to get that person to truly love you. But you have to eventually get to a point where you're like, I need to know what I need in order for me to feel loved from someone else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you know, the average person really know thinks about the like adversarial nature of dealing with a narcissist, you know, just kind of in a general sense, you know, Mm -hmm. it's always some sort of fight. Mm -hmm. Like everything is about bending wills. Yeah. And because they have learned (laughs) how to manipulate. (laughs) Yes. They tend to have stronger will. Mm -hmm. uh, Especially when it's parents on the outside. Mm hmm. They tend to have stronger will on the outside. Now, as most people know, that narcissists are very fragile mm-hmm. on the inside. Mm-hmm. Um, but on the outside, they tend to have very strong will. And that adversarial nature, if you haven't built up your own internal, mm, I hate these words, strength. Fortitude. Fortitude. <laughs> uh, resilience. Then, you know, you're in for a world hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just to add on to your list, um, one of the traits that we've talked about is manipulation that you know that's a big one with NPD and for parental manipulation it it could look different and it could sound different because it's a parent it's Mm -hmm. very different when you are in a relationship because you have no choice you didn't choose your parents (laughs) it's a true power struggle versus being peer exactly Mm -hmm. and their manipulation can sound different so you have um Guilt tripping. Mm-hmm. Oh man, <laughs> the number I've of done people every we work with. You. Yes, that parents guilt trip them. Ooh, yes, boy. that I've done everything for you, and you're so ungrateful. Type of conversations. Mm-hmm. Now, the thing about it is, even if you are ungrateful, that's something that you learn to be. Like we were talking about in the in the beginning, they they give you everything that they can, that their money can afford, and then don't want you to be ungrateful. I mean, want you to be grateful. Sorry, mm-hmm. then they want mm-hmm. you to be grateful. But you and give giving me everything. You've made me feel like I'm entitled to get whatever I say I want. Mm-hmm. But then they manipulate it and say, "Well, I've done all of this for you." It's the definition As of you should. Yeah, a double edged sword. Yeah. What did you say, Doctor? As you should. Oh. Because <laughs> they're your tribe. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You wanted them here. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then they blame you. It's your fault that I'm not happy. Mm hmm. Those are your feelings. Mm hmm. You own those. And I always like to tell my clients you can't make another person happy. 
You can mm-hmm. enhance their happiness, mm-hmm. but you can't make them unhappy, happy, whatever it is, angry, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Um, shaming. Parents use a lot of shaming. Your performance is an embarrassment to the family, you know, especially yeah. when let's just use women because it's an easier example, especially when you have a teenage uh, girl who's pregnant. Mm-hmm. You're mm-hmm. embarrassing us. Yeah. Um, negative compar- comparison. Why can't you be as good as your brother? Or for some, they even compare you to your friends. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Ooh. That's because they got different parents, mom. <laughs> right. Well, I'm not talking to my mama. This is this is hypothetical. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they don't have you. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. Man. Um, unreasonable pressure. Mm-hmm. You will perform at your best to make me proud. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm. Yes. <laughs> you got to think yes. about that. <laughs> I, I had uh, the originals popped in my head with Michael. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I said, "Ooh, him." Yeah, because he was like that to Nick Klaus. Mm-hmm. He's like that to all his kids, but especially Nick Klaus. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> he had a different daddy. Oh, but it's okay. Gotcha. He had a werewolf daddy. Oh, it's not the point. Doctor Jones Hines is like, look, we we went down this road one time before. I don't know what y'all talking yeah, about. No. <laughs> no. We gonna get her to watch it though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I'll give y'all one more because I think this one this one is a good one too. Um, manipulative reward and punishment. So mm-hmm. if you don't pursue the college major I chose for you, I'll cut you off Ooh. from my support. I think you get that in a lot of. Uh, I think that's a big cultural one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I will not specify which cultures, but you know, hmm. there's a lot of cultural uh, stuff steeped in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you find a lot of people pursuing medical degrees, law degrees, and they want to be engineering, right? Mm-hmm. Or not go to school at all, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so there's a lot of people working in a lot of professions that they did not and do not want to be in uh, because of familial pressure and the expectation that you will mm-hmm. either provide for me mm-hmm. because you owe me mm-hmm. or it looks good mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't remember which session it was but it was during the time when we talked about uh how to parent properly the children that you have and mm-hmm. show up for them but we do we did talk about that a little bit um putting your expectations on top of your kid because that that don't work well Mm-mm. Mm-mm. not at all so I know we talked about parental narcissism so what about on level because you were talking about that is a true you know your comment about that being a true power struggle Mm -hmm. so you know we know parent child that is but when you have on level Mm -hmm. you know narcissism you know what would be the differences and i.e siblings friends Mm -hmm. you know because you're dealing with somebody that doesn't have um the ability to superiority right to technically control you right Mm -hmm. um but they can manipulate others right to look at you in a different way um i know when i was doing research on the sibling they talk about um it's a one-sided sibling rivalry Mm. Mm. and like you can love your sibling to death but it doesn't matter what you do they always better and they're gonna make sure that they go get the attention of the parent or the um, caregiver or whoever to make sure that it is that it is centered on them uh the non-narcissistic person ends up being like the person in the shadow and always does everything actually right but mm. the narcissistic sibling is high maintenance so they gotcha. need a lot more care not the squeaky wheel yes okay mm-hmm. yes that mm-hmm. sort of thing so some of the other things that i thought were important about that one was um, they will always force you to know that they are more important than you are. Mm. Even though that's not really the truth. Right. They going to let you know that, well, your big sister did this or your little sister did that. It, uh, the age don't even matter. Yeah. This is, <laughs> yeah. This is not about age. Right. No. <laughs> this is about you being lateral in status. Mm. Exactly. Mm. They um, often feel entitled to everything. So they going to take your toys. <laughs> They're going to take your boyfriend, your girlfriend. They're going to take whatever is yours. If they want it, they're going to take it. Scandalous. Yes. Scandalous. (laughs) Also, there's an inability or unwillingness to recognize 
how you feel in a situation. Mm-hmm. Like something can happen in a but. <laughs> Chalk, chalk it up. You you be okay. Get mm-hmm. it together. But then the same thing that can happen to them later. And they're like, oh my god, like help me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so there's no it's chicken little. Oh my mm-hmm. god, the sky's falling. Exactly. Um, they're also often a pathological liar. Mm. So that's how you get the the other people, um, the power from the other people when you're in that peer to peer. Um. Even I could even see this if you had a boss mm-hmm. and you going in line on on your coworker talking mm-hmm. about well so and so did this first of all so and so wasn't even in the office what are you talking about <laughs> you know that sort of yeah. thing there's always an envy out there to whoever the the person is the sibling is or whatever um everything is about them they tend to be very cunning. They, Mm -hmm. like we've said this before, they are very charming. They are the kid that is always going to be front and center. Um, They tend to do things that get the attention of the adults. Um, They'll push the, (laughs) push the other sibling in the back. I'm going to be the lead singer Mm -hmm. and you're going to be the backup. Mm. Because they are striving for their perfection. They work to be good at whatever said thing is. Like if they are the singer, uh uh-huh. If they are the lead singer, it's Mm -hmm. because it's, they are good Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know nobody's saying you're not good but yeah yeah another part is um and you see this more so once they get older is they have been sabotaging your life your entire life like you didn't even know like Mm -hmm. you was trying to figure out why your boyfriend left you and it was because your sister said blah 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 Mm -hmm. and they thought that that was the truth Mm -hmm. and so you know you don't really see that until something big happens and normally that's that's kind of later in life. Oh yeah. Um, and I said this earlier, but the the word I was looking for is triangulation with the parents, mm. and they keep telling the half lies and yeah. all of that kind of stuff. So that was the word I was trying to think a second ago. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that triangulation. Yeah. That and splitting. Mm-hmm. Mm. You know, those are two things. If we're talking about family dynamics, mm-hmm. man, you could do almost a whole session on just triangulation and splitting themselves. Mm-hmm. Um. Because it is about changing the perception of what's going on. The whole point, I mean, it's just one form of, or two forms of manipulation. Because the whole Mm -hmm. point is to make you see what I want you to see. Yeah. Man. And if I can get more people on On my my side, side. mm -hmm, it (gasps) makes my argument seem more credible Mm -hmm. and legitimate. And it invalidates you. Mm Mm-hmm. I know yeah. Ooh, that triangulation. So for psych 101 lesson, guys. So if you don't know what triangulation is, <laughs> let us explain it to you. Uh, so I'm about to give you the most simplest version of this. Okay. So triangulation. So let's say there's uh, me, Dr. Wall and Dr. Jones Hines. And let's say I'm having um, an argument with uh, Dr. Jones Hines. Right. So then what I will do is say, Dr. Wall, didn't X, Y, Z thing happen? Blah, 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 blah. Mm. So the point that I'm trying to do in triangulation is I'm trying to get Dr. Wall to say, yeah, you right. X, Y, Z thing did happen. So that then I can c- turn to Dr. Jones Heisen and be like, see, told you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now I am one in some ways gaslighting this person. Mm-hmm. Um, and like Dr. Uh, Jones Heisen said, I have now invalidated her argument, whether or not it was actually truly invalidated, the appearances, it's been invalidated mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, because now I have numbers on my side. Yeah, mm-hmm. it creates small battles or wars between everybody. So the only person that's really on top of everything is the narcissist. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because even with in triangulation, you still make the... Dr. Wall in our example, you still make Dr. Wall uncomfortable because it's like, I don't want to be in the middle of this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if I'm a good narcissist, uh-huh. isn't that an oxymoron? <laughs> uh, <laughs> she won't even know that that's what I'm doing. Right. Because it won't be as blatant as what I just made it, mm-hmm. but it'll be much more um, it'll be convincing. Like, Dr. Wall was there with me. No, I wasn't. <laughs> and I'll be like, I'm. I, my name is Bennett, and I ain't in it. <laughs> like Between y'all, folks say, uh, but if you good, then you know it's gonna be hard for other people to pick up on that and yeah. say that you know 
yeah, no, I wasn't, or no, I don't want to be in that. Don't, don't, don't ask me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people have fallen for the narcissist over the years, so they going they just gonna, you know, yeah, they gonna I, walk right, right on behind them mm-hmm. and say, you know, like the Pied Piper, they just gonna do yeah. do 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 do, <laughs> and here everybody come, man, mm-hmm. 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 puppet master. Ooh. Yes, go back and listen to it, guys. Yep. This may be one you might have to uh, repeat a couple a couple times. <laughs> repeat, repeat. <laughs> exactly. Because we are dropping bombs out here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish we had like the... <laughs> 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 DJ, run that back. Okay. <laughs> Drop one of Clue's bombs for me. <laughs> It's so much going on in the world right now, and we could all use some extra support. At Balanced Beacon, we offer counseling services for individuals, couples, families, and groups. If you're in Texas, give us a call at 214-396-6503 or visit our website at www.balancebeacon.com for more information. So we talked about parental. Mm -hmm. We talked about sibling. Mm -hmm. Um, Go ahead. Do you guys see a difference in dealing with narcissistic friends? Oh, because that's another on level relationship. Mm -hmm. But it's the status of that is different. You know, just like siblings is kind of like parents. I didn't choose you, Mm -hmm. but you're here. Right. And it's not as until we're adults. I can't really get away from you either. I think it depends on where you are at with yourself when it comes to friends. Mm. Cause there are some people whose friends are just as important yeah. um, as anybody, you know, and they haven't earned the right. We talking about people that's, they shouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. Um, I have had a narcissistic <laughs> friend and you, you keep wanting to give them the opportunity to change. But then there comes a point where you just like, I'm not, doing this no more mm-hmm. you gonna be over there i'm gonna be over here and that's good enough for me mm-hmm. and then to add on that i think it depends on if you were raised in a narcissistic home because you mm-hmm. won't even notice it it's normal Cause, mm-hmm. or let me take that back you notice that it feels familiar and that's normal mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i can concur with both of what you guys mm-hmm. said um yeah i do think that there's a slight difference with narcissistic friends um, because of that, I want to keep giving you a chance mm-hmm. because, yeah. you know, you mm, is like the word I want to use. I'm going to use it because I don't know what else to say. You like friends differently than you do siblings and mm-hmm. then you do f- parents, mm-hmm. you know, because the relationship usually starts off on some kind of common ground mm-hmm. or some, you know, versus family. You're just implanted there. Mm-hmm. You know, it just is what it is. Um Philia. We know we talked about them different types of love. So, mm-hmm. you know, you do have different types of like love that you show to people in in your world. And so friendship is a lot more fun and mm-hmm. friendly. <laughs> and so you're not thinking of it the same way mm-hmm. as you would these other relationships. Well, yeah. then I also think it depends on um, the type of of nurse NPD that you meet too, mm-hmm. because if you True. meet, especially when you're in college, if you meet a uh, grandiose uh, narcissist when you're in college and they're fun and they drink and they go to the frat parties and they, <laughs> yeah, this my dog, man, this my dog. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think all of them would be like that except for the malignant based off of the ones we talked about. Well, I don't, because I don't covert, know you're going to want to help them. Well, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, let me help help you mm-hmm. you're not okay yeah i can see that because oh, yeah. they would be the one that you study with mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. That, okay. that's the one that you get you to know mm-hmm. in class i got you mm-hmm. and they they not really mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. i can see that but you know what even with the malignant i was gonna say initially they cray initially. they they cray cray they yeah. look you know they, they look wild and yeah because mm-hmm. i think the malignant is like a moth to a flame you know mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like Burn they but they are going to draw in a specific type of person yes yes. definitely um they're like uh y'all remember higher learning with um 
Ooh, he threw it back. That's uh-huh. such a sad movie. Yeah, I know. Ugh. But like Remy. Mm-hmm. He, Paul, baby. Mm-hmm. Yes. He was such a good kid. Mm-hmm. Till yeah. he wasn't. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, I agree with you. That, you know, they're going to draw a certain type. So absolutely. You know, initially it's going to be like, Ooh, this is this is awesome. And then it's going to be like, oh, this is not awesome. This is way out there. Yeah. This look a little different. Yeah. yeah. Now, what I will say, a, a sign in friendship that you often see as far as them being narcissistic or MPD is they are extremely territorial. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You are my friend. You shouldn't be going nowhere with nobody because mm-hmm. you mind. First of all, I'm Jesus's. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the I'm Lord's. Jesus's. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh-huh. But yeah, that's that's something that mm-hmm. I know a lot of people can relate to when you have those very extremely territorial friends, mm-hmm. or they, you know, it needs to be about them. Yeah. It's your birthday, but they talking about what are we gonna do on theirs. Like, mm-hmm. ma'am, sir, it's not your turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, been there, done that, got the T-shirt. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I think it it takes a lot to break away from those type of relationships too. You know, I know we've already kind of talked about breaking away from familial relationships, but it is just as difficult to break away from friend relationships that have that narcissistic um, kind of underbelly to it, uh, because mm-hmm. again, you like your friends in a different yeah. capacity than you do your family, yeah, and you also have to come to grips to like, oh, I chose mm-hmm. to stay in and be in a relationship with this person. Because remember, mm-hmm. friendship is a type of relationship. So like, I chose to be in a relationship with this person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're not taught how to leave friendships. We're always taught how to be a good friend. Sharing is caring. Make yeah. sure you give little Billy your toy. You have to share. Mm-hmm. But nobody's telling you like when little Billy keep throwing in the blocks at your forehead that you can, it's okay to leave. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that doesn't it's mean okay he likes a boundary. You. Right. Oh, God. <laughs> Girl, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so funny. Me and my husband just, just had that boy. conversation the other day. Mm-hmm. He was like, "You were that." He told me, "Like you were that girl that used to hit and be like, I like you.'" I said, "Cause he was like, you're so weird." <laughs> <laughs> hey. He would cringe if I said what I actually did on the show. But like, I I did something that I normally do to him as a, a gesture of love, love, mm-hmm. and he's like, "You're so weird." <laughs> And you like it. Which is why you still hear all these yeah. years later. Uh, but he was like, I bet you were that girl that used to run and like hit the boy. And they'd be like, it's okay because she likes you. <laughs> I was like, oh. Now I'm like, he called me a little narcissist. <laughs> no. I don't think that's what that was. <laughs> it's okay. We all got a little something. We yes. do. <laughs> no. Okay. So then with you know kind of segueing into romantic relationships then when you're dealing with because it's kind of on that same friend tip Mm -hmm. like you're choosing this person to be with but you also still have a different type of feeling for that person than you do versus family versus even friends Mm -hmm. it's different level because you do other things with them yeah Mm -hmm. so that's a, a whole other level of intimacy so you have emotional intimacy you have relational intimacy you have sexual intimacy like you have so many different levels if Mm -hmm. y'all living together then you have spatial you have financial financial Mm -hmm. if you got kids y'all already building family so i mean i feel like uh people who are in the same family system as you as well as romantic are some of the harder ones to disconnect from Mm -hmm. Mm, that's interesting well really yeah expand on your thoughts i think because there's so many layers to it Mm -hmm. and there also is that element of i don't want to let anybody down i want to show up for you Mm -hmm. yeah um because you need me but in reality when you're talking about healthy relationships you don't really need them you desire to have them in your life and they enhance it like dr jones hines was saying when it becomes that need we we done ventured over into something else now he, they the narcissist and you the dependent it's, it's too mm-hmm. much mm-hmm. um but like i was saying earlier we we're not really taught how to show up and be healthy in relationships mm-hmm. we're just kind of showed you know this is how you be mm-hmm. but <laughs> where's my limit 
Like right. I just keep being this. I just keep being nurturing the whole time. Like yeah. I, like we are not taught consent in relationships, and I don't. I mean, non sexual. Mm-hmm. We are not taught consent at all. Yeah. Oh yeah, most of us are not. I would agree yeah. with that wholeheartedly. Most definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's a level of um, <sighs> cloaking. That kind of happens in romantic relationships with Mm -hmm. um, narcissistic individuals. Of course, it's going to look different based off the type of narcissist that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Um, But I believe this kind of goes back to one of our previous sessions where we were talking about um, masks Mm -hmm. and, you know, what what shows up, Mm -hmm. you know, that kind of wolf in sheep's clothing kind of attitude in um Y'all remember those like Tex Avery cartoons where it had the wolf and he was trying to go after like the, like the redhead bombshell, um, mm-hmm. kind of thing. And they do the eyes and stuff. Yeah, and they'd be like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's what it puts me in the mindset of. Okay. You have this, you know, you have this individual that is preying on you, mm-hmm. you know, and you have no idea that you're, you know, out to slaughter basically because they've already picked up on all of these traits in you that will serve the purpose that they need to be served. Mm -hmm. Um, And until, of course, like we've said already before, until you kind of get that internal um, fortitude, strength, resilience, Mm self-esteem, however you want to term that, um, you will continue to be their prey. Yeah, I think that's why it's important for people to work on themselves before trying to be in it in an intimate relationship Mm -hmm. and even if you think you're okay even if you think you're healthy because the thing about it is even when you think you're healthy you can still end up with someone who's unhealthy easily and then now you become unhealthy because Mm -hmm. you become what whatever you because sometimes we get so in in our, in the headspace of wanting someone and wanting to have our person mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that we will fall for anything and also we're not thinking that Freddy Cougar is about to jump out at us. Mm-hmm. We're thinking, oh, this is just a nice guy, mm-hmm. girl, mm-hmm. whatever, and they're going to treat me correctly and all that, but you know that's saying don't be expecting you from other people is real right and there's not really this awareness of let me be observant of the person i'm dating it's oh my gosh he's cute and he's choosing me so we go together instead of like i like you you look good you do some things for me i do some things for you let me keep observing you to to see if you're going to match up with ideally what i need Mm -hmm. for this phase of life and can we grow together like that is a a part of dating that just is skipped over yeah and the thing about that is we're not saying that you're not that you can't be attracted to something on about this person Mm -mm. because initially when y'all first catch each other's eyes there's something about this person that's going to have to attract you to this person for you to even be interested in talking to them however once that connection is made and numbers are and numbers and names are exchanged then like Dr. Wall was saying, then you have to start looking at the internal stuff. Mm -hmm. You have to give it time to manifest because again, like Dr. Wall, once I say this, she's going to say it. Once we (laughs) fall in love or in like with someone after two months, you don't know them. Yeah. It's clumsy. mm -hmm. This makes me think about this study that I was reading and I I actually highlighted Mm -hmm. um, something from Uh, That kind of speaks to what you guys are both saying. So um, just kind of the short overview of the study is they were looking at like characteristics that um, affect long term and short term romantic relationships Mm -hmm. with narcissistic individuals. So uh, this is what it says here. Um, So we show that short term romantic appeal associated with narcissism is primarily attributed to the dimension of admiration Whereas the long-term romantic po- problems associated with narcissism are primarily attributed to the dimension of rivalry. Mm. Mm. So, you know, they were saying ultimately that in the short term, 
you can you can be okay mm-hmm. you know because it's all about being in admiration mm-hmm. and that's the easier thing to kind of deal with that's the easier problem to to face mm-hmm. but because of that adversarial nature within narcissism um narcissists and them dealing with people over the long term the problems start to become about the rivalry between the two of you mm-hmm. and their their need for domination their need for um, and their entitled nature, their need for um, admiration, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. their need for being seen, being heard, being appreciated, all this other stuff. Yeah. Um, that ends up becoming the problem and why romantic relationships with narcissistic individuals um, tend to fall apart over the long term. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can see that. Well, and you have to think about it, especially depending on the type of narcissist you um, develop a relationship with. If it's grandiose, I'm tell you, it'll be fun. You'll have so much fun in the beginning, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then, but you got to give it time to fizzle out to mm-hmm. determine if that's just a part of your nature. Well, if it's a part of your nature and it's healthy, <laughs> or is it a part of your nature and it's unhealthy? Mm-hmm. It gives me like you know, you guys know I'm a visual person, so when I think about the three types of narcissists that we've talked about, and you being in a romantic relationship with them, if I had to put them in the category of flames, right? Mm-hmm. So, to me, being with a, a grandiose narcissist is kind of like a match. Light fast, it still burns, but it's fast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A covert to me is kind of like a campfire. Mm. It takes a little bit. It's a slow burn. You know, it's still, it's much bigger, um, requires a little bit more effort and energy to put into. Mm -hmm. And then I think of, um, malignant, like an inferno, Mm -hmm. Mm. you know, they're dangerous. It's a lot. There's more heat, more intensity, more, um, danger that comes along with Mm -hmm. them. Um, and it's harder to put out Mm -hmm. versus the other two. Again, while they still have their elements of danger to them, they are not necessarily as dangerous as the third type. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think malignant, I think we've spoken about this before, but malignant narcissist has a tendency to definitely find the most naive person mm-hmm. because they can shape them. Yeah. And most vulnerable. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. All of that. Mm-hmm. So you got to be careful out here in these streets. And just so... We have to have materials for our people. (laughs) And one of the books that I have been having a lot of people read is a book by um, Dr. Henry Cloud and Dr. John Townsend. And it's on uh, safe people. And they actually, it's called safe people, but they actually talk about unsafe people. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But they they actually talk about both, but it's based on unsafe people. So if you want to read some information on how to identify if a person is unsafe read that's a good read to 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 put in your um your rolodex or your book of decks mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> book of decks i like that um i would ne- say boundaries by the same two people mm-hmm. the book boundaries is another one that's a good one and they have a variety of levels teen dating marriage regular boundaries mm-hmm. like all of that mm-hmm. workplace they got them all they do so if you want some material to read on um, how to identify safe people or unsafe people, mm-hmm. um, that's that's a good one. Another good workbook to have is the Gaslight Recovery Workbook. <gasps> Man. Oh, yeah. um, many of my clients have that book. Yes. Um, and it just helps you to see what you have actually gone through because a lot of times we downplay it and we diminish what we've actually experienced. And then it gives you some tools as far as going forward, showing up for yourself and setting boundaries in a healthy, healthy manner. Mm -hmm. So just kind of in the vein of recovery and, you know, working through slash healing in dealing with uh, a narcissistic uh, relationship What have you ladies, you know, kind of worked with your clients or what would you kind of recommend as some, you know, initial things that people can do if they're trying to, you know, end that relationship and heal from it? I would say my first one is to set boundaries. I know y'all hear us say that all the time, but so my thing is, if you're going to leave, you need to definitely set boundaries with the person you're leaving. 
uh, if it's in a relationship. If you're going to stay, you need to set boundaries with you and them. Mm -hmm. That's where I would start. Yeah. I mean, that's what I was going to (laughs) say. Because first of all, you have to remember, like we talked about in that session, um, lines in the sand, like you need to remember that there are so many different areas of boundaries and people just think about the emotion or maybe you can't talk to me that way, but it goes a lot deeper than that. Like what energy are you giving to these people? Mm -hmm. individuals because that's normally the main one that they struggle with oh I'm looking at their Instagram oh my god they send me text messages well why are they sending you text messages if they're supposed to be blocked Mm -hmm. like it's it's so many of the things Mm -hmm. so you know (laughs) you have to identify your areas that you know are my boundaries porous are my boundaries rigid are they healthy like go check that session out. We're not going to have a whole Mm -hmm. deep dive back into boundaries, but Mm -hmm. boundaries is one of the the main things, but also there has to be forgiveness of self Mm -hmm. because a lot of times people who have been in these types of relationships feel stupid. Mm -hmm. They feel like, Oh, I should have saw this. I should have known better. Well, how? Mm-hmm. Like that is the whole. Well, I'm healthy. I feel like I just I should have been. I, I'm smart. But we're not talking about regular people. We're talking about people with personality disorder, and they are manipulative. Yes. yes, they are going to sneak in mm-hmm. and move all your furniture around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like that is literally what a narcissist does. And you're like, am I tripping? Yes, you are tripping, but not in the way that this person has told you you're tripping right yeah. that's what i was thinking mm-hmm. it's a lot of uh, you know my kind of recommendation piggybacking mm-hmm. on you would be like starting with some inner child work yes and looking back work. on how did this person infiltrate me mm-hmm. essentially you know is was i raised by an individual that you know like you were saying a little bit earlier uh, dr joan times was has my viewpoint of relationships been skewed because I was raised by an individual that acted this way. Mm -hmm. So I I already am coming with a level of acceptance of this type of Mm -hmm. treatment. Mm -hmm. Um, So if I don't go back and look at some of my childhood stuff and how that came to be, then I'm going to be bound to continue. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be in therapy. Well, how do I keep attracting Mm -hmm. this type of person well, mm-hmm. have you done the work to figure out, yeah. you know, where you learned that this type of behavior was okay? Right. Or maybe you had a great life, a phenomenal life, and you just have not witnessed this level of debauchery. <laughs> you too. know what I mean? Because I, I we have some clients who are like, I, I just never knew people would want to act like this or could act like this. So it that may be the other end mm-hmm. for oh, some absolutely. of the interns. Were you, were you sheltered? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? And I would also add to that, you know, if you decide to stay, be mindful of where you put your energy, where you put your energy, like Dr. Wall was saying a little mm-hmm. bit earlier. Because um, if you put all of your energy into this narcissist, re- narcissistic relationship, you're going to be drained. So you Mm -hmm. are, the thing about it is you already know you're not going to get what you need from this individual, Mm -hmm. from this relationship. So that energy that you're putting into this relationship needs to go somewhere else where you will receive what you need from other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I would also say resist the urge for confrontation. Oh God. You know, um, don't fight these people. Yeah. This is a person that has, again, their whole thing is about rivalry. It's an adversarial relationship. So they have lots of practice that you don't have. Mm -hmm. Um, most of the time, you know, of course it's not a hundred percent, but for the most part, they have practice that you just don't have. So resist the urge to confront them and hold quote unquote, hold them accountable. Cause we talk a lot about holding people accountable, Mm -hmm. but not really exercising and looking out what that actually means. Mm -hmm. And that's not always just saying, well, you did X, Y, Z. Okay. That's just informing. That's not sometimes holding people Mm -hmm. accountable in these type of relationships is that I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I told you what I needed. You said no. And then I (laughs) left. (laughs) Like people have to realize like you can't, yeah, you want to save the relationship. I get that. You may, Maybe you don't want to start over for the upteenth time because you ain't found your person yet. I get it. But 
this still ain't your person. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to continue down this path. You need to be like, okay, I I said it. This is the response I'm going to have towards this situation. Like you already need to have a game plan of how this looks, which is why we say, you know, get your boundaries together. So you know what your steps are. Mm Mm-hmm. And if you are with a malignant narcissist, then your exit strategy is going to be different than mm-hmm. the ones, you know, the more grandiose or the um, covert or even the other types. Um, because the malignant narcissist, this theirs is about control. Yeah. All of them can be dangerous. But if you're with a malignant um, narcissist, you definitely need to go to a therapist so that you all can create a safety and exit plan because it two different things two different things but you need to create a safety plan and an exit plan because it can be very dangerous to leave a malignant narcissist Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because you are their possession Mm -hmm. Um, yeah I mean there was a recent article uh, I think in the New York Times or something like that where a um a New York officer oh, I saw hid that. in her former girlfriend's home mm. and the girlfriend came yeah. home with her new girlfriend and um, unal- sh- they were unalived. Well, mm-hmm. the new girlfriend was unalived and the former girlfriend was shot. So mm-hmm. you, especially like we talked about in the first session, like these individuals are typically in high power or yeah, high mm-hmm. power mm-hmm. situations, uh, jobs, all that kind of stuff. So it ain't no just leaving. Right. You, you going to have to move. Yeah. Like you got to take it seriously. And that's why you need to seek some professional assistance to help you mm-hmm. because they may have contacts. They may, you know, and you need to connection yeah. and you need to um, work with someone who has that experience with, let's just say domestic violence because they have different types of connections. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Absolutely. Any final thoughts, ladies? Yeah, be careful. <laughs> Please. Hide your kids, hide your wife. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> but also, you know, th- let's leave it up to the interns. If y'all have mm-hmm. questions, if you're in a relationship uh, with someone with NPD or traits, um, you can DM us. We can, you know, try and lead you to the right person to connect with if we need to. Or if you just have questions, it don't have to be, you know, anything like that. It can just be questions. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we always end off with a quote. This week's quote is anonymous. It reads, there may be no I in team, but there are three in narcissistic. Must be this volume control. So, okay, interns, process your notes. Be sure to catch us next session and find us on all major platforms at The Recycled Podcast. If you're a new intern, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thanks for listening. And remember, we are shifting and reshaping our psyche through healing conversations and connections, one discussion at a time.